So as the title says, today I'm going to be going through and deconstructing the code of conduct. Uh, my name is Safia, it rhymes with Mafia, and you can find me on Twitter at Captain Safia if you want to mention anything I say during this talk. So first, I want to start off by saying I love open source. I've been working in open source for almost two years now, um, three years actually. Um, I've been a maintainer on a couple of projects. I've been just a contributor. I've helped projects expand their offline personas and communities. I've done a lot of work in open source, and it's the place that makes me most happy. And I also love codes of conduct. For those of you who don't know, codes of conduct are documents that communities, whether online or offline, adopt that are designed to make sure that the kind of communication that happens within those communities is respectful and productive. And I love them because I love when the environment is respectful and productive and people have the opportunity to share lots of creative and interesting ideas. But not everybody loves codes of conduct. In fact, when you're looking to adopt a code of conduct in your community, the conversation usually goes something like this. Let's implement a code of conduct in our community. And somebody else might say, but, and then it's like 500 comments on a GitHub issue. And today I really quickly want to share some of the comments that I've seen in my personal experience as a maintainer and contributor. Um, across several projects. And this is my perspective as somebody who's in the leadership um, community of these projects. So I'm the person who is involved in ultimately adopting the code of conduct. Um, so the first excuse that people use is just like so mind blowing. It like <laughs> irritates me, um, but freedom of speech. Uh, so I'm a naturalized uh, citizen to the United States, which means I had to take two constitution tests. I took the one in eighth grade and then I took the one where I helped my parents study for their constitution test. Uh, so like I know the constitution and like rights and stuff, and this is not how it works. Like, <laughs> like Thomas Jefferson and John Adams weren't sitting up in there in the 1700s like, gosh, we really got to defend Jared K875 on GitHub because he's got some stuff to say. Like, no. This is just an invalid argument. Freedom of speech is a contract between you and a government. It's not a contract or a right between you and a community online that can be managed by its own independent team or by a private company sometimes. Another common um, kind of argument against codes of conduct that I see is but cultural differences. And this is a really tricky and manipulative one. And the argument here is that codes of conduct are designed to regulate communication between multiple people. But in open source, you have people from all sorts of countries coming together, collaborating in one environment. And unfortunately, the language, the standard language in open source is English. So whether you're from Portugal or Brazil, you have to speak English if you're collaborating on an open source project. And sometimes your ideas maybe don't translate well. You know, maybe you have a thought that you think of in Spanish or Arabic or Chinese, and when you go to translate it in English, it comes off a little bit wrong. Um, and the idea here is that codes of conduct are going to unfairly persecute people of different cultures who can't effectively translate their thoughts and ideas from their native tongue to English. This is also like majorly bullshit. Because codes of conduct are not designed to protect or regulate slights like these. Codes of conduct are designed to protect people from legitimate grievances like sexual harassment, racist lingo, sexist language that's used online. It's not slights that are based in cultural differences. And I think as we live in a globalized society, we recognize when somebody's language is a result of the background or the native tongue they adopt. Um, but this is a really effective argument used by people who want to deter um, individuals who generally pursue codes of conduct in communities who care about building inclusive spaces. Because the attack here is that you're implementing a code of conduct that's going to hurt people of different ethnicities, even though it's not valid. Um, it's the attempted um, line of thinking, if you can call it that. It's not really thinking. 
Um, so this is the second reason that I've actually heard people use in um, communities, which is invalid. Remember that codes of conduct are designed to protect people from legitimate grievances like sexual harassment, racist, racist and sexist-based harassment on the internet. Um, the second is just like people have got their heads in the sand. Like no one in our community would do this. We're nice people. We're a small group of five friends who are just hacking away at something. Um, and to this I say, your community as it is now might consist of you and your friends who are all nice, and usually that is the case because you and your friends who work on open source are all 30-something white dads with two kids and a wife who'll take care of them in their free time. It's the truth. Um, but as your community expands and grows, you're going to attract individuals of different personas who might not be like the small group of friends that you started out with. So you need to take precautions and protect your community in advance from those things. This is the last one that I've actually like heard. Oh my gosh, but we can't let the S, what? There's, it's, it's not like a war. There's, it's not a game. There is nothing going on. Um, Things like this really irritate me because as I mentioned earlier, codes of conducts are designed to make the atmosphere of a community productive. They're designed to inspire innovation and creativity because people feel safe and willing to express tons of interesting and different ideas. It's not politically motivated. People try to make it so. But I truly think at the end of the day, it's about giving people the space to be creative and ambitious and intelligent, whether in open source or in an offline community. And this is the thing with open source. It's like all freedom and rainbows and lollipops until it's not. It's got a romanticized, it's a romanticized concept in the tech community. It's this place where really intelligent people build really cool things and there's a lot of collaboration and fun. And then some terrible, shitty things happen, excuse my language, um, in open source. And when that's the case, you need to take precautions to protect yourself and your community from them. And so you should do that because generally this is a community that you love and these are people that you care about. So really quickly, I want to share three tips that I think anyone should adopt when they're looking to implement a code of conduct either in an open source community or in an offline space. Um, so the first is have the conversation about the code of conduct early and often. Um, I was one of the kind of early contributors on a project, and one of the first things that we did, one of our earliest commits was a code of conduct. There wasn't even a question about it. We pulled up the contributor covenant, uh, we put it up on our project, and we moved on with our lives. And that set a standard that we care about this, that this is part of our central identity as a project. It was there with us from the beginning. But it doesn't help to just like put a code of conduct in a markdown file on your repository and then leave it. You need to have a conversation about your code of conduct early and often, or often. You know, is it working? Is it not working? What parts of it have we had to utilize? What parts of it did we not have to utilize? Should we change the way that we enforce this code of conduct? It's like any living, it's a living document, so you need to constantly examine it and see how your community is affected by it. Um, this is the second one, and it relates to a lot of the statements that I mentioned earlier, which is you should limit the conversation about adoption, adopting codes of conduct to a small committee within your open source project. Um, usually what happens in open source, for those of you who might not know, is there'll be a central group of maintainers and contributors. These are the people who have either started the project or contributed lots of code or documentation. They're kind of the key figures. And they'll make a decision in their small group, like we need a code of conduct in our project. And then the next thing that'll happen, because it's open source and it's this open collaborative space, is they'll open an issue on their GitHub repository that's something like adopt a code of conduct. And then like people come out of nowhere, like who is Jeff 25 and why does he not like, like he doesn't even use this package, why is he here? So I really, encourage everybody, if you're looking to adopt a code of conduct in your community, to keep it to a small committee. Um, believe it or not, it's not something that you need to get the entire consensus and perspective of your community on. That's the kind of tone um, and approach that's taken in open source because it feels like the right way to go. It feels like if you're gonna put a governing document 
um, in your project, then you should ask for people's opinions about it. But here's the thing, that small committee of people, the people who are the maintainers and contributors and the um, core collaborators of the project are the ones who hold a lot of power. Um, and they have the ability to act as agents of change. And when you open up the issue of adopting a code of conduct to the public, you open up the floodgates to a lot of unsavory characters who pollute the conversation with kind of disagreements or dissident that isn't valid. For every one troll that is commenting on your GitHub issue about adopting a code of conduct and disagreeing with it vocally, there are 10 people who are thankful you are doing it and not saying anything. And that's the kind of approach you should take. So don't even bother opening up that discussion to trolls and just adopt it. Um, and if they can't handle it, then go use another package or another programming language. Like, there's no space for you here if you don't want to be respectful and be part of a safe community. And another one, um, and this is something that happens um, not too often. So let's say you do adopt a code of conduct and your community is actually fairly nice. Not a lot of terrible things go on. I encourage everyone to sit down with their leadership committee and brainstorm or simulate some situations that might happen surrounding the code of conduct. Um, think about what you would do um, if an instance of harassment happened or an instance of assault at a conference, anything like that, and talk through your team about what would happen and like what your plan is. Like, do what people do in the actual real world and like simulate and experiment and test your code of conduct. Um, it's actually that important. It's the same way you would test software, you should test a code of conduct. So there are three tips that um, I think are pretty useful in my experience of adopting codes of conduct across various online and offline communities. If you have questions about any of them, feel free to come up to me during lunch right after and I will gladly fill your brain with all sorts of ideas. But for now, I am done. Um, thank you for listening intently to my talk. Uh, the images used in this presentation are courtesy of Unsplash. And that's me.